Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I have my February wrap up. So my February wrap up is small but mighty. I only read six books. Some of them were exceedingly large. Some of them were a little bit dense but um, it was quite a weird month for me reading wise actually because I read much less than I normally do. The last time I only read six books in a month was December 2020 and also four of the six books that I read were part of two separate series. So I did do a little bit of binging as well and I also made or contributed to spoilery content for five of these six books that I read this month and I also don't anticipate Anticipate this wrap-up being very long which is unusual for me but we will head straight into some stats so in the month of February I read six books in total which added up to 3258 pages which breaks down to an average of 116 pages per day which is around five pages per day less than my average for the star ratings I had one two star read one three star read two four stars and two five stars breaking down to a pretty high average of 3.8 per book for the demographics we kept it nice and simple. I read six adult books. For the formats, I read four standardly formatted novels, listened to one audiobook, and read one comic. For the genres, I read four fantasy romance and two fantasy. And for the places where I sourced these books from, five of them were from my own TBR that existed prior to the start of 2022, and one of them I have hold in 2022. So the first two books I knocked out in the month of February were Glint and Gleam by Raven Kennedy. The main reason why I read these two is that I did interview Raven Kennedy on my channel as part of Faro Feb and as you guys requested it I did also make a spoilery video with all of my spoilery thoughts and reactions to these two books in the series. So these two are books two and three in the Plated Prisoner series which is a very dark adult fantasy romance King Midas retelling. Our main character is a young woman called Auron who has been gold touched by King Midas and she is kept in a cage in his palace. However Auron doesn't actually mind being in the cage because prior to being there with King Midas she grew up on the streets. Her parents were killed when she was very young and she had a terrible childhood essentially with people taking advantage of her and also assaulting her. So I don't actually like to say too much about this series because I had a set of expectations going into the first book and as soon as you start there's like quite a few red flags that make you question the nature of the romance in here and also make you question the character's motivations. This series has lots of themes of sexual assault so do be wary of that because it is present throughout the entire series and we also have very central themes of abuse in here as well. I really love how this series deals with the themes of abuse and that it makes you see lots of different facets of it and also different perspectives on the abuse going on in here. The series is quite slow moving in general. The first book is pretty much set up and then Glint is very slow moving, pretty much taking place in the same location for the entirety of it. But something that I really loved about Glint is that it opened the world a little bit. It mainly focused on getting to know new characters and new aspects of the world like new kingdoms because there is a kind of a war in here where there is a threatening presence from one of the kingdoms and Midas is essentially trying to solve it but in maybe a, a, a roundabout kind of way and we got another side to the politics in Glint. Gleam is my favorite book in the series so far. I gave both of these four stars by the way. This one was more a low four star because while I really enjoy the writing and the world in here it was very slow with things only really happening at the end but this one was a high four star. It had a whole ton of romance that I really enjoyed and also just some badass scenes towards the end of here. So the fourth book in this series is called Glow and it's going to be out in May. I'm so excited to get my hands on it. This one is quite chunky. It's like 600 pages but they both read really quickly. So if you're looking for a dark fairy romance would recommend checking this one out especially if you like your slow burn slow moving series with a lot of like politics and a bit of a war theme in there as well. I then read two books in a different series. One of them was a reread and those were House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Maas. So House of Earth and Blood is my favourite book of all time and I was a little bit nervous going into my reread of it in case I didn't love it as much. But if you are unfamiliar with what this series is about, I do have a whole ton of content on both of these books. But it is Sarah J Maas's first adult series. It is urban fantasy romance and it follows a half fae woman called Bryce Quinlan who is a little bit of a party girl. She lives in a city called Crescent City which is kind of this urban melting pot of all different
different creatures. We have like fairies, mermaids, shifters, angels, sprites, nymphs, and a whole ton of other different species in here. But a whole ton of people are turning up murdered in Crescent City. So the Archangel, who is the governor of the city, asks Bryce to look into it because he believes that she has a personal connection to the case. And because this is quite a dangerous case, he assigns her the fallen angel Hunt Athala to be her bodyguard and they carry out the investigations together. So for House of Earth and Blood, I do have a full non-spoilery review on this that I made back in 2020. If you would like to go and check that out and get like a very detailed spoiler-free breakdown, because I'm not going to say too much about it here as it is a reread for me. But I was worried rereading this that the first time around, I just got caught up in the hype. Maybe it wasn't all that good. Maybe I was just like swept away in all of the excitement. Can confirm this is still my favourite book of all time and I actually enjoyed it more on reread. I got a whole ton more out of it. I connected to the characters even more. This is a very emotional book. There's a lot of sexual tension in it but there's a lot of themes of trauma and recovery as well. It has really great found family aspects and the character work is top notch. So I sobbed <laughs> the entire end of this which I did not do at the first time around and this is definitely solidified as my favourite book ever. As soon as it was released I then picked up House of Sky and Breath which is book two in this series. I have just posted a spoilery vlog of this if you want to see my reactions to the stuff that goes down in here and I do also just have a full Crescent City playlist with a whole ton of content on this series because I'm obsessed but um I'm not going to say too much about this one mainly because it hasn't been released all that long. It is a pretty chunky book and because I love this series so much I was very sensitive to spoilers before I went in and I was still spoiled a little bit. I really enjoyed it I gave it five stars. Both of these were five star reads in case you couldn't tell. I didn't enjoy it as much of House of Earth and Blood. I didn't feel like the sexual tension was as good in here and I don't think it was as emotional. I didn't cry or even really feel all that emotional throughout any part of this except for one thing that happens quite near the end. This one is also heavily political. There is a rebellion that's kind of ongoing in the background of this series and there's also a big problem with slavery in this world and this book focused a lot more on the rebellion and the war. So I did really enjoy the political aspects of it and the plot in general. I am reserving my judgment on the end of this book until book three is released. I don't know how I feel about it right now. It all depends on what happens in book three. But yeah, still my favourite book of the year so far, but I definitely prefer this one more. And I wouldn't even say this is necessarily one of my favourite Sarah J Maas books. I think that this maybe comes in at number five after Kingdom of Ash but before A Court of Silver Flame. So yeah, not the strongest in my opinion, but I still loved it. The comic that I picked up in February was Rat Queen's Volume 7, The Once and Future King by Feria Portraits portrayed, that's probably not right, and let's go, not Curtis J. Weeb, which is interesting. I still haven't looked into this, but the original author of this, or the author and the illustrator, was Rock Up Church and Curtis J. Weeb. The illustrator left for valid reasons. They removed him from the comic, but where has the original author gone? I'm confused. But this one is an adult fantasy swords and sorcery kind of series, following a group of boozy battle maidens for hire who are essentially performing quests for the realm. There is an overarching plot that runs from, I I think it's from volume four up until volume eight which is the most recently published and I don't know if this series is continuing because I know the story arc wraps up in volume eight but there's been no word of any more Rat Queens volumes since then so who knows what's happening but the thing that I love the most about this series is the characters. They all have very distinct personalities and they bicker, they don't get on all the time but they're kind of like a phone family you know, it's like a sisterhood and usually I rate the volumes in this series four or five stars however this one only got a three from me because one of the central recurring things throughout this volume is that the Rat Queens are currently not getting along very well and it just made me really sad to see that you know and it also took away a lot from the volume for me because my absolute favourite thing when I'm reading this is seeing how they interact together. I don't feel like I love this series as much anymore. I had some issues with the art style as I said the original illustrator was removed which is fine perfectly valid reason why they removed him but I've had to leave gaps in between reading the volume so that when the art style changes it's not as noticeable to me because while I do really enjoy reading comics I am very picky about art styles. Now I will say that the art in this volume in particular was 
absolutely gorgeous and I think it might be the best that I've seen from Rat Queens. So undoubtedly the art in this one was absolutely stunning but I think the story was just missing a little something from me and I didn't like the conflict within the Rat Queens themselves. And then the final book that I read in the month of February was one that I wanted to DNF which was The Shadowed Sun by N.K. Jemisin. This one is a desert fantasy and the magic system in here is called Narcomancy. So we have gatherers and sharers and the gatherers extract dream blood from people and the sharers use that to heal people. Now there are conflicting opinions on the magic in this world. There are some countries and cultures that find it barbaric but we are mainly focusing on the country that actively practices this magic and sees it as a normal way of life. This is a very political series and the bulk of both of the books in this series are heavily political conversations between influential people across all of the different societies. So the plot of this one is very similar to the plot of the first one. They're kind of like two standalones as well. You don't necessarily have to read the first book in this series to be able to read the second. It would be very obvious if you did just read this one that something had happened prior to the start of this book as this is set 10 years after the first one. But there are so many different kind of like threads in this world that aren't fully explored that I don't really think it would matter. But in this book and the first one, people are mysteriously dying in the nightmare realm, which they shouldn't be. The goal of the Gujarin, who are the ones that actively practice this magic is to put people in a restful sleep in the world of dreams. So the plots of the two are very similar although the reason behind people dying in nightmares is different in both of the books. So I should have DNF this book because I was very obviously not enjoying it when I was as soon as like 50 pages in but I was a co-host for this duology for Aaron from Books and Busy's Busy Bee Book Club and so I had to persevere. So my personal rating that I'm giving you guys here is two stars but I won't be rating this book on Goodreads because I shouldn't have read this book and I wouldn't have read this book if it wasn't for the book club and while I was reading this I identified so many elements of this series that just really aren't for me which explains why I didn't like it. So the magic system in here is mainly based on dreams and the nature of dreams is that they are illogical and one of the things that I really don't like about this series is that the magic system is a soft magic system. It's very intangible and if you know anything about me you will know that I love my logic based books and I love my hard magic systems with concrete rules and this just does not have it. When it comes to writing and constructing a story and a plot I generally prefer worlds that are very detailed and laid out. Like I love an info dump at the beginning of a book that tells you all about the world, the politics, the magic and all of that kind of stuff. Whereas this is quite a plot driven series and it feels like N.K. Jemisin has built the world around the plot. So we have new things in here that weren't even mentioned or hinted at in the first book. We also have things that were introduced in here that you could write a whole story on that I feel need to be developed or could be developed further and would be really interesting that only come into play to support other things things that are happening in the plot and then are kind of just left and not delved into any further. While I do read and can enjoy plot driven stories, I generally prefer character driven and the characters in here feel really flat. Like there's horrific things happening in here, points that could be really emotional but I feel like the way that they're delivered on the page strips all of the emotion away from them and in terms of this being very political, I feel like the politics flip flop between the two books so I don't really feel like I can root for anyone in here and for me to really enjoy a book I have to really be able to get behind a character or a cause or it has to be like really intricate and interesting in a way that like makes my brain really work and kind of fascinates me and this did not deliver on either of those fronts for me. And then also in terms of the character perspectives and me not being able to root for anyone, most of the characters that we follow in this book are more influential people in society and so even though this is multi-perspective you don't really get the perspective of like your average citizen and as the politics are flip-flopping between the two books I don't even know what the people of this world want because we never see their perspective and I feel like I prefer to have that balance of like influential people like royalty politicians and just like your average person because it tends to be in multi-perspective fantasies that I've read anyway you will have the perspective of like a king a queen a prince but you will also have the perspective of like an assassin or a thief to kind of balance out those opinions and views on the world and this 
this was just really missing that for me so yeah two stars but i shouldn't have read this book if it wasn't for the book club i would have dnf'd it so i'm not going to negatively impact the rating of this series on goodreads i am still going to be reading nk jemison as well because i believe all of her series are very different i'm especially interested in the hundred thousand kingdoms because i believe the first book in that series has a heavily romantic plot and also the fifth season because i believe that the magic system and the world building in that one is the kind of thing i like where it's really intricate and has lots of rules so i'm not ruling out nk jemison but this duology was just really not for me and content warnings in here for abuse incest and rape there is a very graphic on page rape scene in this book and while they are all of the books that i managed to finish in the month of february i did also start ruin of kings by jen lyons i am almost halfway and 308 pages into it and i'm really really enjoying this one i won't talk too much about it here because you'll hear my full thoughts in my next vlog and also in my march wrap up but while i don't yet have an idea of what the overarching plot of this is going to be and what the main goals are for the main character i'm really loving the gray morality in here and i'm also really loving the way that the story is constructed and how that flip flops back and forth between timelines and characters so i have very good feelings about this book and this series so i'm just hoping that um it comes through for me because at the minute i'm feeling like a four maybe a five stars but the ending would have to be real good for it to be five so that's it those are all of the books that i read in the month of february please let me know what you thought about any of the books that i read this month also let me know what your favorite book that you read in the month of february was but aside from that guys please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna if you head to my description box you'll find a link to my good reasons from twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish candle website the instagram for that and a 10 percent off discount code but that's it for me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you're a go and nobody knows with guns in under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no